All right, this is the uh, end of course practice test for Algebra 2, question number 27, and it's kind of long to read. It's not really that hard to do. I'm going to show you how to do the uh, regression on a calculator, so that's nice. If you want to do it by hand, there's probably another video for that. I'm not going to do it that way. The question said, Dylan performed an experiment by tossing pennies onto a table. He removed the pennies that landed face up, recorded the number of pennies remaining, and then tossed the remaining pennies onto the table. What a way to spend a Saturday. The chart below shows the number of pennies Dylan had remaining on the table after four tosses. So basically, he tossed a bunch of pennies on a table. Why he would count out 500 pennies is beyond me, but he did. He took all the heads and tossed those off and kept tossing until he could figure out uh, when he could get to no heads, I guess, because, you know, Dylan's awesome. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the data to determine whether or not what type of graph I think it's likely to be. So I'm going to look at the differences on the top. Obviously, they're all just going up by one. If you're surprised by this, this may not be the class for you. On the other side of it, I need to look at the uh, value on the bottom, which would correspond to the y, essentially. So if I do this, here's 33. This one's 57. This one's 112. And this one is... I have no earthly 268. Sorry. So as you can see, it's not going up by the same amount every time. So it's not a linear. If this was everything was one up top and everything was two on the bottom, say, I'm probably looking at sort of a linear graph or an expression. But in this case, no. So I can just mark out the thing that has the t there. That would be a linear because it only has the variable without any exponents. Everything else is essentially um, not a linear. So I can look in that range. So what I'm going to do now is take the data and actually use it in the old calculator because hopefully you have one for this test. If you don't, I'm, I don't know, steal one, whatever. Now, I need to go into the list. I'm using the TI-84 Plus or some version of it. If you don't have this calculator, it's probably pretty similar in most calculators. So I need to go into the list. I need to edit this list. In my first group, I'm just going to put 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then I'm going to click over into the L2 and type in the corresponding values for the dependent variable. 120, 63, and 30. And then I'm going to look at it to make sure I typed it in right. Because there's nothing more annoying than doing it, and then you kind of get this idea that it's wrong. So make sure you check that it's right. Once I have it, I'm going to quit out just so I don't start doing some weird thing into the table. I'm going to click in, and I'm going to do uh, a regression. And D is an exponential. Oh, I kicked the calculator off. That's awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do is look, because there's lots of exponents there, so I'm just going to guess that it's probably exponential regression, which is right there. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to hit this, and it's going to tell me that in the form it's supposed to be, it has y equals a being some number, and this number they say is 485-ish, and then it's raised with some b number to the x power. And the b, they say, is about 1 half. That would be 0.5 for those of you scoring at home. If you want to convert it into a fraction, feel free to do that. And the x value here is the t value. So doesn't it look almost exactly like this, except this one has an x and this one has a t? See? It's exactly the same thing, more or less. So if you just determine what type of graph you likely have and then punch the actual values into the calculator, do the regression that you're supposed to do, you should get the correct answer. So good luck. Have fun tossing quarter or pennies onto a table.